Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about the design I created for the Robotics 421 bowling competition. While we've been in quarantine we've been asked to create a robot that bowls using the Sphero Bolt. Instead of toilet paper rolls I ended up using Red Bull cans because I have a crippling caffeine addiction and I had plenty of them lying around. Now when approaching this problem I wanted to create a solution that was scalable. I didn't just want to create a simple search pattern. I wanted something that could work on a larger scale be it we add more pens or we move the pens around. Because of this, I decided to go with computer vision. I had never done computer vision before, so that was probably the biggest challenge, was learning that. And before we get into the details on how exactly I did that, I think it's best to show you what the robot does first. The very first thing the program does after successfully connecting to the Sphero is it begins trying to track the location for each one of the pens. It saves the coordinates for each pen and then moves on to the robot. The robot turns on the LEDs so it's easier to track its location and saves the coordinates of the robot. It then drives forward so that it can calibrate the correct angle. After it's done that, it begins targeting the first pen, which in this scenario is the green one. It finds the correct angle and drives directly towards it. It lurches back and then finds the next pen in the list and angles correctly towards that and drives into it. The first step was creating an environment where computer vision could work effectively. I created three different tops to the pins so that the camera could easily differentiate between them. I mounted the webcam on the green screen stand that I had to give it a bird's eye view of the field. Finally, I brought in a softbox light that I had to help even out the lighting in the room. This significantly improved computer vision's ability to differentiate between different colors and also reduced the amount of false positives I was getting. The computer vision portion was definitely the most challenging and the most work. The first step was to run a color picker application that I modified. By adjusting these sliders, I can in real time find the optimal values to isolate a color, thereby creating a mask. I can then copy these values into an array that stores a unique set of values for each pen color. I then can repeat this step and track the LED matrix on the Sphero. The next step was to kind of fix the perspective issue we have with this camera. By warping the image into a rectangle, we now have a much easier time calculating the angle between points. Now all that's left for us to do is actually find the points. We can do this by iterating through the list of specific values we found earlier in our masking program. We can now find the contours of these masked images this will give us approximate dimensions of the shape. We can now return the X and Y value of that shape, which is the coordinate of where it is located on that new stretched image we created earlier. The purpose of this module is to calculate the angle it needs to turn to hit the pin and then send those commands to the robot. After calculating the initial coordinates of both the pins and the robot, the robot will drive straight forward at zero degrees. It will then re-measure where the robot is. Since we previously stretched the image to create a nice rectangular cartesianal plane, we can measure the angle of where it started and finished in relation to the horizontal axis on the camera feed. We can now subtract this angle from all future values to ensure that the robot drives straight in relation to the camera. Since this essentially calibrates the robot, we can actually turn the robot any orientation that we want when we initially start. Even if the robot is facing backwards, it will recognize that it is roughly 180 degrees off, and when it goes to send the first value, it will correct that value so that when it goes to launch, it is facing the correct direction. Now all that's left is for the program to calculate the angle from where the robot currently is to the next pin in the array. After finding the angle, it drives directly at the pin and stops. It then backs up and recalculates where the robot is. It repeats this until there are no more pins left. This module also utilizes the PySphero library, which is a library that I found after the original Sphero Pi library was unusable. I documented as many functions as I could get working. However, all I ended up using was the drive with heading function. This allows me just to pass in the angle that I would like the robot to drive and what speed I would like it to drive at. That pretty much wraps up my entire design. I kind of skimmed over some of the OpenCV stuff because it got a little complicated. I posted links to both the tutorial that I watched 
uh, to learn OpenCV and the GitHub for all my code if you want to look at any of that. I also posted a link to the document on the PySphero library if anyone wants to look at that as well. Uh, other than that, uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh dang, it is like 1.30 a.m. I need to finish this video. <laughs>